Number one wants us to know which expression is equal to four to the zero power times four squared. So remember that anything to the zero power is equal to one. So this is really one times four squared and four squared is 16. One times 16 is 16. Number two, select all expressions that are equi equivalent to three to the eighth power. So this means three times itself eight times, right? So we're gonna have three as a factor eight times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is not the same thing as eight three times, okay? So definitely not A. When we look at B, remember this is gonna have 10 threes on top and two threes on bottom. So that's gonna simplify to three to the eighth power because two of them will cancel, cancel out. So if you think of, if I write it out for you, so that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, divided by three squared, so two threes, then three divided by three is one, three divided by three is one. So two of them will simplify out and you'll have eight threes left. So B is good. And that's where that subtraction comes from. So when you're dividing, you subtract these exponents. So it's really three to the 10 minus two power. Um, and that'll be three to the eighth. Three times eight, no. Three to the fourth squared. So this is three to the fourth two times, right? That's what squared means is that the thing that's being squared is there two times. And then this is three to the fourth. So we know that there's four threes here. And we know that there are four threes multiplied in this next one. And we're multiplying those. So that's eight threes being multiplied. So this one is equivalent as well. And that's where the rule of multiplying these together comes from. So you're really doing three to the four times two, um, which is three to the eighth when you have that power on the outside of the parentheses. So E, we've got three times three, four times, right? So we're gonna have this thing inside the parentheses four times. And so that means we're going to have eight total threes multiplied together. So that is good. Then we had um, negative exponents. So when you have a negative exponent, you can just move it to the other side of the fraction and make that exponent positive. So this would move to the top. And when you move it to the top, the exponent switches signs. So it goes to the opposite. So it's three to the negative eighth on bottom. So it's going to be three to the positive eight on top. So this one is equivalent as well. Number three, a B population is measured each week and the results are plotted on the graph. What is the B population when it was first measured? So remember, that's when you have um, your number of weeks or your time is zero. It's your vertical intercept. So this point right here, so 500. Is the B population growing by the same factor each week? Explain how you know. So you want to look at the kind of new output over the um, old or the original and just divide those. So if we divide a couple of these, so this kind of newer one is 1000 divided by the one before it, was 500. So that gives us a factor of two. So then we can do the next one, 2000 divided by the previous one of 1000, and that gives us two. Then we can go to the 4000 divided by the previous population of 2000, and that gets us two. So this is yes. Um, part C, what is the equation that models the B population, B, W weeks after it was first measured? So the population equals the initial population, which was 500, times the growth factor, which is 2, okay? So this growth factor here is 2, um, 
and then raised to a power of your time period weeks. So this number here is the initial population. Okay, so you plug in the initial population here, the initial value of whatever problem you're working with. And then the number inside the parentheses here is your growth factor. So that's the number that we got when we divided um, the populations to see that they're growing by the same factor each year. And then just to the W, power or whatever your time period is. Number four, a bond is initially bought for $250. It doubles in value every decade. Complete the table. So we started with $250 bond then it doubles every decade. So we'll double it to 500, then it'll double to 1,000, then it'll double to 2,000, okay? And then we'll kind of leave this one for a second here. Um, how many decades does it take before the bond is worth more than $10,000? So if we kept this going, right, we'd be at 4,000 after four decades, we'd be at 8,000 after five decades, and then we'd be at 16,000 after six decades. So when is it gonna be worth more than 10,000? It's gonna take six decades. Because at five, it's only 8,000, and then six, it jumps up to 16,000. So now it says write an equation V relating the value of the bond to D, the number of decades. So this is where we'll use that same equation that we just wrote in the previous one, right? Um, to take our initial value, okay, so you take your initial value, and that's 250, then we multiply by our growth factor, okay, so the growth factor is what it's doing each time, so this is multiplying by 2 or doubling, so your growth factor is 2, and then to the D power, or whatever your time period is, so in this case, they're calling our time period decades D. So then that would be our equation. They want it to be V equals. So V equals 250 times two to the D power. And then you can always check these to make sure because then you could plug different numbers in um, from your table just to, just to make sure you did it right. So if we do 250 times two to the first, okay, to plug in this one, that's 250 times two, which is 500. So that checked out. So then let's try 250 times two to the second for this next one. So that's 250 times four, two squared is four, and that gives us 1000. So that checks out as well, okay? And you can check a few of them just to make sure, but that'll help you know that this formula that you wrote is correct. Number five, a sea turtle population is modeled by this equation um, where Y is the number of years since the population was first measured. How many turtles are in the population when it was first measured or its initial value? So that's going to be this number out front here, right? So 400. You can also get it by plugging in zero, okay? So if you plugged in zero for your time period, meaning no time has elapsed, then anything to the zero power is one. So then this just becomes 400 times one, which gives you 400. It's also that first number in the equation. Is the population increasing or decreasing and how can you tell from the equation? So it's increasing and we can tell by looking at the growth factor. So this growth factor here, if it's greater than one, then it's increasing. So five-fourths is greater than one, meaning it's increasing. If that was less than one, then it would be decreasing. And then when will the turtle population reach 700? Um, and explain how you know. So you can just plug a few things in here, right? So we can just do 400 is the initial population. It's growing by 1.25, which is five divided by four. So you can just multiply and 400 times 1.25 is 500. 
then multiply by 1.25 again, and you get 625. Multiply by 1.25 again, and you get 781.25. So somewhere between two to three years. Okay, so two to three years between there. So after two years before three years. Number six, bank account A starts with $5,000 and grows by 1,000 each week. Bank account B starts with $1 and doubles each week. Which account has more money after one week? Well, so this first one starts at 5,000. This is week zero, right? So then week one, this one has 6,000, okay? So this is bank account A. And then bank account B, starts with $1 and then it doubles. So obviously bank account A has the most, right now it's at 6,000 versus two, okay? So account A. And then after two weeks, well, this one's gonna add another $1,000 and then this one's gonna double to four. So still account A. And then here's the graph showing the two account balances which graph corresponds to each situation. So you can figure this out a couple of different ways, but this triangle one here, the initial value right there is $5,000. So that's gotta be bank account A, right? So the triangles are bank account A. And then the circles then would have to be B because it's starting way down here nearly at zero, right? You can also see, because it's just steadily going up, um, these triangles, which is just adding five or adding 1,000 each time versus these circles kind of stay really, really low. And then all of a sudden they jump because they're doubling each time, which doesn't do a whole lot in the beginning as the numbers are small, but as they double, then it all of a sudden starts to shoot up. Um, given a choice of which two, uh, which two accounts would you choose? So I think there's probably different ways to go about this, right? Um, it kind of depends on how many weeks you're going to be leaving your money in there, right? So if you're leaving your money in there for under 14 weeks, okay, then you'd want to choose A because A is higher up until 14 weeks. And then after 14 weeks, it changes, so if you're under 14 weeks, you probably want to choose A. But if you're going to be at 15 weeks or more, then you're going to want to choose B. So it really, really depends, you know, on that. Number seven, match each equation in the first list to an equation in the second list that has the same solution. Um, so you got some options here of how you want to do that. You could manipulate one, two, and three if you wanted, or you could manipulate these. You could also use graphing software if you wanted, and you could go to Desmos and graph each of these and then see when the, which graph the, this one landed on. So if you had all of these graphed and then you graphed this one, which does it land on? That's the one that matches. Um, I'm going to just manipulate using algebra. So I'm going to multiply all of these by five. So if I multiply by five, I get five Y. Five times this will just be two X because the five will cancel. And then five times two will be 10. Okay, so first thing I did was multiplied by five. Now I'm going to subtract the two X to the other side, right? So if I subtract two X over, I get negative two X plus five Y equals 10. So that's from just subtracting 2x to both sides. So then that equation matches number three. So I know that A matches number three. Um, B, okay, I don't want, um, I mean, my Y value is at five kind of in each of these. This is two and a half is half of five. So I'm just gonna multiply these by two. So then I get 2x equals negative 10 minus 5y if I multiply everything by 2. So then I'm going to add 5y to both sides. 
So we get 2x plus 5y equals negative 10. But none of these say negative 10. So then we're going to need to multiply everything by negative 1. So this is going to be negative 2x, negative 5y, and positive 10. Then we see that one here at number 2. So B is going to match with number 2. Um, C, I don't want that 5 on the bottom. So we're going to multiply everything by 5. So that's going to give us 5y. 10 over 5 times 5 is just 10. Negative 0.4 times 5 is just going to be negative 2x. So then I want to add the 2x to the other side. So we get 2x plus 5y equals 10. That matches number 1. Part D, no multiplying needed. We'll just add 5y to both sides. So then we end up with 2x plus 5y equals 10, and that matches number 1. E, we can just subtract 2x from both sides. So we end up with negative 2x minus 5y equals 10. And that's number two. Um, and then this last one, we'll have to multiply because we've got a two on the bottom. So we'll multiply by two. We get 2x equals 10. Negative five over two times two is just going to be negative five y. So then we'll add five y to both sides. And we get positive 2x plus 5y equals 10, and that matches number 1. Number 8, function f is defined so that its output is the number of followers on, social, on a social media account t days after setup. Explain the meaning of f of 30 equals 950 in this situation. So we know that the input is 30 days. So this is saying um, after 30 days, there are 8,950 followers for this account. So what does F of zero equals zero mean? Well, this means after zero days, there are zero followers. So this just means like the initial amount of followers of this account was zero. Which makes sense, right? When you're just setting up your account, you're not going to have any followers. So the initial amount of followers um, was zero. Write a statement about the function that represents the fact that there were uh, 28,800 followers after 110 days. So the 110 goes into the function, that's the input, and the output is 28,800. And then explain the meaning of t in this situation. So t is the number of days. after the account was created, right? When um, the account reaches 100,000 followers. Or you could say the number of days it takes for the account to reach 100,000 followers. It doesn't have to be my exact language, but essentially this is how long it will take for the account to get to, T is how long it will take the account to get to 100,000 followers.